everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Death in Cambodia, Life in America. Last episode, we covered the very beginnings of how the Khmer Rouge started organizing people in order to control them. Um, People had to give up their food. You had to start going to a community kitchen in order to eat. Um, And at that point, they really started having control over the people and um, really have instilled fear in the community. We also ended up covering how your reputation really mattered and how you had better hope that the Khmer Rouge didn't think you had money um, and how also every single person that you knew who had a good relationship with the Khmer Rouge could really end up saving your entire family's life. So here is a continuation of that story. When they got the uh, community kitchen, so now they uh, assign people to work in the kitchen. So my mom got assigned to work in the kitchen. How do they choose who gets to work in the kitchen? They know who's a good cook? No. They just... They just... Pick one. <laughs> pick one. Okay. Assign. So it was really lucky if you able to work in the kitchen because it's close to food. You don't have to work outside in the under all the day sun, under the under sun, the rain, and then you know for ten, twelve, fifteen hours a day. So, uh, very lucky. And at that time, uh, I have uh, four siblings: me, my brother Hatch, Amanda, and Fawn. Okay, so. I also realize that throughout this entire conversation, I'm calling my relatives, my aunties and uncles, the way that I normally call them, which not everybody out there obviously understands Chinese. So I'm going to make a little clarification here. I'm sure you guys have already picked up on the fact that I call my grandma Mama, which can get a little bit confusing because that doesn't mean that she's my mother, Mama meaning my grandma on my dad's side. Um, and then as my dad explains his all his relatives, my dad's actually the eldest. So there's my dad and then there's my Auntie Amanda, who is still a younger sister of my dad's, but I call her Daikuche. There is my Uncle Hatch, who is younger brother, who I call Seisuk. And then there's also Fawn, who is the youngest, youngest auntie, and I call her Saikuje. So I know it can get a little bit confusing. Don't don't worry about that, but I just wanted to make that clarification. So my brother was only, I believe, uh, 11 years old. And Amanda, my sister, was, I believe, with nine and then six. Four and six. Right. So, um, uh, because mom registered when they came in to do the head count, we lied to them. We only told them, we only have total five people. Actually, we have six include. Uh, it's not include Amanda. That's why we report only have three children. Why did you do that? Because uh, we heard that they're going to pull all the uh, children away, start from age nine or eight up. I see. To a uh, labor camp. So Mama very, very quick, very sharp. So she was playing ahead. So... Uh, so we hire one, 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 one child. And then if you hire one child, when you go to eat food because they divide it, I said one person only have one scoop of rice. At lunch or dinner time, they only give you one scoop of each person, one scoop of rice. And then if you have five family. Uh, five people in a family, you only have five scoops of rice. So now we have six people and eat five scoops of rice. And uh, my older sister cannot come out of the house. 
See how to stay inside during the daytime. See only can get out at night if nobody see. And she was hiding in a closet, or uh, I think you know, uh, in Cambodians' house, it's uh, it's not attached to the ground. Uh, it's a bow ground. Uh, hmm. Yeah, like a, like a hut above ground. Uh, like a hut, yeah, above ground. And they would lift it up with the wood pieces. With the, with the wood, with the you know. And you'd have stairs kind of going uh, up into it. Exactly. I see. Okay. With the uh, uh, a straw uh, a roof. Yeah. 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 See. Uh, so there's no place to hide, really. I mean, if they walked in, they could find oh, her. They, if they if they want to check you, uh, yeah, they will see. They will uh, find her. Some, Time you cannot make noise. You have to be really stay just like uh, in a dark room, and then uh, uh, during the day, and then when my mom get off from work, she sometimes she took the leftover, but you're not supposed to take leftover home too. If they caught you, and they kill you right there, they already announced. I said you cannot pay. Uh, food home. Don't even think about it. Yeah. And uh, so, but you got no choice. Mama got no choice. She just take whatever. I think that's why she always wear a big pocket, you know, to work so she can put some food in. Uh, some, you know, if they check, she cannot get away. But I think it, it was so lucky. Then I just, everybody just work in a farm, you know. You cannot talk. You cannot talk. Just work, and then soldier will guard you. And uh, I remember one day, this guy was a school teacher in a big city. And because his skin very like a city city people. Like a light skin. Light skin. Mm. So uh during the day they call him from the uh, rice field as and then take him away. Uh and they tortured him at night. So you heard that? No, I didn't hear that. But since the whole town know that they tortured him, uh, uh, that's in that group. I think it's about five people in my parents' group. They pull out during, you know, one by one, one by one. So people were so scared, so scared. And uh, every time they call you, man, that means you die. I was uh, the I I was fourteen years old, thirteen or fourteen years old at the time. So uh, we were just like. Trap in a in the dark hole that you know, uh, just like a uh, we just we just couldn't say we couldn't do anything. Just in the morning, wake up, go to work, and then come home and eat whatever they have, whatever they feed you. So. What happens if you get sick, or if you're tired, or if you wake up late, or if you don't hear the announcement? If you lie skin, if you a seed, move from the city, if you sick, tired, you have to go to work. If you don't go to work, the soldier will come into your house. They decide. They decide to kill you 
or just let you go. That's what a lot of people, even they tired or sick, they still go to work and tell you fall in the field because they're afraid. If you say I'm tired, you cannot say I'm tired. If you say I'm tired, they kill you. They kill you. You cannot say I'm tired. Was that the first time you really you heard people getting murdered, getting killed, or when you were fourteen? No, I saw that. You know, when I left, remember when I left? Uh, uh, you But know, you didn't because... see it actually happening. It was. I saw one that the soldier asking when the first day they move into uh, uh, the city and people wearing jewelry, wearing nice watch and all that. They ah, you know, uh, one guy didn't do it. they didn't do it. Yeah, you know, and then they just go ahead and put the gun, pull the gun, and kill him. Yeah, in front of everyone. So, no. Uh, You've seen killings before. I I seen killings before, and then you know uh, that's why everyone everyone aware that this group, this soldier, they can kill you any time, any minute, over anything. Over anything. If they had a bad dream, then they wake up. They don't like you. You die. Mm -hmm. Simple. You die. That's crazy. So uh, yeah, that the uh, that for that six months, I I saw a lot of stuff that they treat everyone just like a prisoner. Like what? Every single one. And they keep telling people, we have to live the same, equal. Uh, everyone has to live in equally. No rich, no poor. We have to start from the bottom. We not gonna depend on any country, anyone. We gonna start from the bottom. I don't know what did that mean. The Destroy the car and uh, use the uh, the tire to make the shoe. They cut the tire to make. So it's it was so shoes for everybody working. No, no, no. If you have shoe, you really lucky. No, they're not providing anything for you. They just want you to go to work. And the rest of them, you have to close, even close. Uh, they're not gonna. They're not gonna give you anything. What if you make your own clothes? You can make your own clothes, but then they will no asking you. But for for the for, for the first six months, they understand that you have left over, you know, clothes. You mm -hmm. can use that, but how uh, long it lasts? You know, it's not going to last long. And the work that you guys are doing, this is what farm. I mean, planting rice, planting rice, cutting tree, uh, plant all kinds of fruit tree. What did you have to do? I just that first six months just planting rice, planting rice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, before you plant rice, you kind of have to, you know, prepare the uh, soil, right? It's a lot of work in the farm. You you don't. How any tractor or you know machinery? You just all do by hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.